The specialists are back and we are discussing the latest episode of The Amazing Race 36. It was episode number five. It aired last night and we're doing this bright and early, uh, especially for you West Coasters. It's 8 a.m. Bright and early for McKenna and I, who are night owls, not 11 a.m. people. So here we are (laughs) Um, getting ready to break down everything we watched this week. A pretty unshocking, unceremonious ending, in my opinion, (laughs) but we will... We will get to that. Caesar and Ricky just continue to dominate. Uh, Rod and Letitia finally had moments of, I don't think they're going to make it very long on this race. Oh and Sonny and Busy still don't know how to read a damn map. So here we are <laughs> to break it all down, to discuss every moment of it. McKenna, what were your biggest takeaways from this episode? Um, That, you know, one detour or roadblock can change the, the outcome of the the episode because you know we see sunny and busy arrive last to the roadblock but they're not last to check in um we see uh what are their what are their names yvonne and melissa no or well Shorey. we see them this episode no the older couple oh Derek and chalisa yeah they were dominating early <laughs> right and then now they're kind of slipping and I felt like they left the roadblock but arrived to the detour a, a little late and and there are people that that passed them. Mhm. I thought was weird about that that one was they didn't really show us. Hey Will and James, I think this is I think this is our guy. Um we got to get <laughs> we got to get now that I'm back covering the amazing race James, I need to have you back on here. Um, yeah. so, you know, Will Will is always welcome as well, but we got to make that happen at some point. <laughs> Cuz here we are doing these morning recaps uh throughout and and uh we got some we're flopping around a little bit. Sometimes we do later in the night, sometimes we do in the morning. But he says yes anytime. All right. I'll hit you up after we're done with this. And we'll figure something <laughs> out. But uh, he's doing the pit stop tonight at 5.45 p.m., I believe. I believe. I- I'll see how good I am at reading one tweet and keeping it memorized in my head. But anyway, <laughs> I felt it was really strange that Derek and Shalisa just kind of fell behind without them ever really telling us that they were falling behind. I know. I was. There like, was no oh. info about this. No. No. <laughs> Okay, so is this a rarity in the race, or is this something that I, I should they, become accustomed to as I jump back in? I think they probably had to do some sort of drama for Kishori and Karishma, and they just chose to like not show Derek and Shalissa doing certain things and like falling behind, so it's more suspenseful at the end to try and get that um, who comes in late. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... um. I don't know, because I guess they were the team that finished in front of them. Mm-hmm. So they were the one who was going to be closest. But I feel like there really was no drama to this, because once they left this skateboarding portion of this leg, there was really no catch up time after that. You'd have to get lost, which a lot of people were getting lost <laughs> driving through this. So we'll definitely talk about people not knowing how to read directions. But it felt like there was no catch up. And I feel like it did when, when, cause at the beginning of the episode, they were talking about Derek and Shalisa and it was like, wow, they're doing a great job. We just got here before other people. I think they got to the T bird before mm-hmm. other people got to the T bird. And I said, wow, good for them. They're, they're yeah. coming back. Like, look, they, they found it. And the other people who started with them didn't. And then all of a sudden it was, and now Derek and Shalisa are in third to last. And I was like, wait, what? When did this happen? And I feel like normally they'll give you the narrative. They'll give you the confessionals of, we just could not figure that out. It was annoying. Mm -hmm. I don't know what was going on, this, that, whatever. We weren't even getting those confessionals. And maybe it was because Sonny and Busy fell so far off. And because Rod Mm -hmm. and Letitia really were the more entertaining of the top level teams in this episode. Because they could not figure things out worth anything. (laughs) Maybe that's the case. I don't know. Yeah. It just was weird to me. It was weird. It, it was weird. I felt like there was some confessionals missing, like left on the cutting room floor of like, oh, crap, we forgot to put that in. Yes. So we'll see. Um, anyway, talking about other things. So <laughs> we we've been discussing this now for five, five weeks and yep. we did talk about these are all in South America or at mm-hmm. least Spanish speaking countries. Mm-hmm. Ricky and Caesar, second, second, first, first, first. Juan and Shane were coming in hot on their heels in this one. It seemed mm-hmm. like, like that didn't seem like editing. Cause Phil even said 
you know how close you were to first. You just saw it. Like, I guess that yeah. means that they really did get there right before them. But what's it going to take for them to not make the final leg of this race? I think an uber physical challenge. But who's going to be left who can beat them even in an uber physical? I get the uber physical challenge and what you're saying, but Derek and Chalisa are in their 50s. Um, Angie and Danny would lose that for sure. Mm -hmm. Letitia tonight kind of showed that maybe she's not. I guess she was. It wasn't the physical portion, but Letitia just kind of seemed like she was having an off night. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But, um, I guess there's still two teams that are considerably weaker than they are. Not that Derek and Chalice yeah. are necessarily weaker, but they are older. And mm -hmm. you can see, like, I thought it was very funny when after they got off of the wall, Derek goes, this better just be fine, Phil, at the pit stop. Because you could tell that the two of them were just absolutely spent mm -hmm. by that point. So maybe that's what it would be, but I don't see them ever getting lost the way these other teams are getting lost Yeah, because yeah. they're so fluent in Spanish, or at least Caesar is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I that is true that I feel like that's a lot of time taken off of teams where like – who knows where Rod and Letitia would be this episode had they not gotten lost, had they known where they were going. So like that timing that uh, Ricky and Caesar can get rid of because they know where they're going is, is pretty substantial. It is. It is because we're seeing people struggling with the map and trying to figure it out. And obviously like the struggling with the map is also from the point of, I don't really know the words I'm reading, which is making it harder to then look up, figure out what's there, look down, figure out what's here. And you're not familiar with reading maps and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But Ricky and Caesar definitely have the advantage there because they can say, okay, I know what we're looking for, you know, Centro day, whatever. And that yeah. they know what that means in their head. So they know what to look for. So I do think that that has been a serious advantage for them. And with how mm -hmm. these people are getting lost throughout, I could see this continuing to be a problem for everybody yeah uh i agree i think it's gonna be hard to stop them and i don't know what will mm -hmm. it it's gonna be it's gonna be a lame <laughs> season though if they just continue to win out and then win the race yeah i agree with that i do do totally agree with that um <laughs> because it's not that i'm over them that's not what i'm saying with this yeah it's just, it almost feels so, yeah. so overly predictable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're going to so have that's, to trip up at, one, at some point. At some point. Maybe not leave, uh -huh. but like not get first. <laughs> I know. I know. And, and it's like they're running so far ahead that maybe they're not building the relationships that a Danny and an Angie are. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It just feels like a lot. It really yeah. does. It just feels like a lot. So yeah, we're down to, we're down to eight. And right now Juan and Shane truly, I mean, I guess Amber and Vinny are running hot too. Cause they're second, second, third, but Rod they did have a little bit of a quarrel today. I feel like they, they weren't like completely on the same page, but they weren't Rod and Letitia. Yeah. What? So is this just a difference of personality where Amber gets a little flustered more easily than Vinny and Vinny, thinks he's being supportive, but really he's driving her absolutely insane. I think so. And they don't get it in the way that Derek and Shalisa do because yeah. they haven't been together long enough. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah. I, I think, um, that Vin, uh, Vinny is just trying to be like, all right, calm down. It's okay. And she's like, calm down. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what were your thoughts on this roadblock of building a skateboard? I thought it was fine. I mean, I feel like this is, I mean, what does it really have to do with Santiago Chile? Sure. They can, they can really go out there and try to Phil can give his spiel and try to make me think he's telling me something. I don't, it's Hey, they're not Los Angeles. They're not, they're not Southern California skating. Let's just put it that way. But I didn't mind this because I do kind of like the building of the things. And I thought putting in the brackets backwards was a fun hiccup. Obviously everybody's mm -hmm. going to look at the wheels. That was going to be an easy part. Obviously, everybody was going to do, you know, uh, uh, whatever else it was. I don't know, putting them in the right spot. But the brackets being backwards was interesting as something that kept getting people hung up. 
I was a little shocked that Kishori and Karishma had such a hard time with it because I understand like not being handy with tools, not being good at certain things. But at some point, you're just putting together a puzzle. This wasn't some heavy objects. It's not like you were welding. It's not like mm -hmm. you were you were going out there and you were trying to like rewire electric. This was right. this was a puzzle at the end of the day. And what were there? Six nuts, ten nuts. Like it wasn't that yeah. many nuts and bolts. So I felt Listen, like this was a, enough nuts for Rod to lose. Yeah, enough nuts for Rod <laughs> to lose. But I feel like there was a bit of panic on their side in this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's also hard with this roadblock being like, you have to copy the the guy with the red helmet, but you also can't see the bottom of the skateboard either. So there's yeah. no like time. If he was doing like kick flips or like kicking it up so you could see the bottom real quick, but it seemed like he was just skating along and you can just catch the wheel colors and not positioning. So there, I feel like there's no way they could have gotten it in one shot unless they guessed right on the trucks or, or when some of these people really did know how to build a skateboard. I mean, I had <laughs> friends growing up who, who were, you know, big into skateboarding. Mm -hmm. If you know how to build a skateboard, you know how to build a skateboard and you'll know that these things are in backwards or that they're not. Um, yeah. It's like putting a bike together, right? Like if you're, if you're told to put a bike together, if you've ever worked at a bike shop, you'll put a bike together in five minutes. If you've never mm -hmm. worked at a bike shop, everything's going to look foreign to you at first. So I think that's where Vinny had a huge advantage here because he was saying, I've, I've skated a lot. I've done all these things. I think he did get it in his first shot. Mm. Yeah. And we also see like um, Melissa, who's like, I skate all the time, but I don't put together a skateboard. She still got it rather fast, but um, she did. She didn't do it in one in one go because she didn't realize the trucks were on backwards or whatever. Part of me also wonders how fast. Wait, oh, this was Melissa. Okay, because I was thinking of Sunny and Busy, where I was like, yeah. part of me wonders how fast they actually did it, and how much <laughs> of that was just okay. Derek and was it Kashori or Karishma? Uh, Karishma did the. Okay, like how how slow were they just both doing? So it made Sunny or Busy look like they were just so much faster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I um, I. I'm curious most out of all of this, like with the skateboard thing, I thought it was fine. I thought it would have been easy for me. I thought I would have had like no problem at all doing that. Yeah. Same. Um, it's like the puzzle aspect of it. So. Exactly. What was the better detour to do in this challenge or in this leg? For me, no clue because I hate, like it's you're depending on now public for one side with the perform for pesos or it's like hella upper body strength which i don't have for, with climb for clues so i mean i would go for the pesos because i physically would not probably be able to do the um climb for clues but i'd say if you can do the climbing, I would do that because it's a surefire thing. You don't have the struggles that like Rod and Letitia were having where like Letitia wasn't doing well asking people for money. You really have to go out and ask people for that money, depend on them to actually give it to you. Yeah, it's an interesting one because I was thinking the way I kind of think about this at this point is how would I do if I ran this with my wife? How would I do if I ran this with one of my best friends? Mm -hmm. And if I was running this with one of my best friends, we absolutely would have been doing the rock climbing. I hate heights. I am absolutely terrified of heights, but I think an adrenaline push on that one would have been easy because physically I can climb that like mm -hmm. pretty much no problem. So it would have just been a matter of screw it, suck it up, just climb. Don't even think about yeah. it. Just go. Just and it, focus it would, on the wall. Yeah. It. I think I would just fly through that out of mm -hmm. absolute fear. I would have just, yeah. been climbing <laughs> that. but I don't know if my wife would have ever gotten up there. Mm -hmm. And then I think about if I did this with my friends, that would have happened. No problem. And then I think about the one where you're begging for the pesos. And I try to think about, okay, if I was doing that with my friends, I don't know who would have been good. Will would have been really good at going up to people and asking them for money. Will like, that's the personality will has anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying he goes up and asks people for money, but he has no problem <laughs> walking up to people. And oh, you're not, being, not saying that. <laughs> being a total ass is what I'm trying to say, but he would not have had the Letitia stage fright. That's for mm -hmm. sure. But then when I look at it and I, I I think like, okay, was that one actually any easier? It didn't seem like it didn't seem like you actually needed to be good 
at no. banging the drum or stomping your foot or any of that stuff. It seemed like all of the pressure was on the person who was walking out saying, can I have pesos? Mm -hmm. And what is, let me check this really quick. 2,100. The conversion rate. Yeah. Pesos is $2 and 62 cents. So they weren't, it seemed like at the time, like, wow, they're asking for so much. And that, you know, that's probably part of the appeal when you're watching this and it's Chilean pesos, but it was $2 and 62 cents. It wasn't that crazy. <laughs> okay. It really was not that crazy. Yeah. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. Cause it's like, man, that guy just threw in, I saw that there was 1000 in there and I said, what? And then I <laughs> look, then you look it up and it's like, okay, that is barely over a dollar. So that's not mm -hmm. that insane. It was just, I feel like that was probably the easier one. Yeah. Because there was no finessing that one. Like the rock climbing one, you got to have the physical ability to get up there. And that was mm -hmm. pretty damn high. That wasn't just a 10 foot wall. Like that was. Also, I feel like the, the knobs weren't that big on some spots too. Like, I feel like you had to be some like sunny or busy was struggling. Um, Derek and Chalice's was super small, I feel, compared to what um, um, Juan and Shane did. Yeah, like, I I, I want to say all colors are the same because they should they be. They didn't look that way from the but... shot. Yeah, it didn't look that way. And you have to think, it, you're saying from the Amazing Race perspective, all colors should be the same because they mm -hmm. want it to be even. But that rock climbing wall is not trying to make them all the same. That has been there. And so maybe there was a difference to it. And maybe it was based on the earlier you got there, the easier it was. Maybe. I don't know that for sure. <laughs> yeah, but maybe that's what it was. I'd, I'd be interested yeah. to hear if, if, if they all were, because they're all doing different ones and those were not the same. Um, but mm -hmm. it seemed like the other one was just easier. And it might have taken, maybe it was a lot harder to get to. I don't know. Rod and Leticia almost ended up in, in Argentina. So yeah. who knows? But it seemed like this one was easier to get to. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why a lot of teams are doing it. it was in like, I think it was in the park or right around the corner from the park. Whereas going, mm -hmm. you know, that might've been a little bit more difficult. I don't know. Um, clearly these legs are very condensed because they're still thinking in terms of COVID. But yeah. yeah, I think that other detour, this is the first time where doing the physical one actually probably was the less um, straightforward of them. The other one was probably just easier. I mean, I feel like that might've been just the right move for pretty much every team. Yeah, well, now that I know the conversion rate, yes. <laughs> yeah, you're not asking for much. I mean, granted, though, you have to remember that like a thousand pesos right. might get you a lot more. Because I remember when I was in, where were we? we were in Hungary. I remember I bought like a, a Matryoshka doll that was like 50,000 krona or whatever, whatever their mm -hmm. Hungarian dollar is. I forget what it is. And it was like $7. <laughs> like it was yeah. absolutely insane because we were walking around. I'm like, I want to get. I want to get packet cards. Like we were at like a tourist shop, but it was, mm -hmm. it was more in the city. So it wasn't like your ultimate tourist shop. So I was like, yeah, Ooh, this has some different things. Let's go here and let's buy this stuff. And I started looking at the prices and I'm like, uh Oh, and you know, when you're walking around Europe, you don't always have the best service if you're on American plans and everything like that. So I was like, Ooh, let me check this. And then I looked and I was like, Oh, never mind. No biggie. Yeah. I went Bye. to Peru and that was about the same, the same thing where something would cost like three soles and it was, 30 cents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, $3, $2 and 62 cents is all they were trying to get here. And this was two years ago. So it might've been even less. Um, <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, let's take a look at these. Okay. So the biggest, the biggest thing is you've watched enough of this show. I've watched a decent amount of the show, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Sunny and busy ninth, ninth, seventh, eighth, seventh. They're good at the physical portion. Yeah. They have, they have, <laughs> sorry. They have very little knowledge going on when it comes to stress moments. They are mm -hmm. not good using their brains under pressure. Mm -hmm. They haven't been good with directions at all. They could not figure out the Rebus puzzle at all. Mm -hmm. They're always behind. Can they solve these problems for themselves? Or are they just going to keep having to play from behind because they can't follow a map? I think they're just biding time right now. Uh, they might be able to catch one or two teams, but other than that, I think they are going to be, you know, that bottom team or that next to bottom team until they're out of the race. I don't see them making the finals. I I feel like they have to be gone within the next 
two episodes. Yeah, because if you look at the people who have gone so far, the 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 teams that struggled are going home. Mary mm -hmm. Maya and Rohan, obviously, but then Chris and Mary were 11th and 12th. Anthony and Bailey were 8th, 8th, 11th. Michelle and Sean were 5th, 11th, 10th, 10th. Kishori and Krishma, 10th, 10th, 8th, 9th, 9th. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give me a lot of hope for Sonny <laughs> or Yvonne and Melissa, because Yvonne and Melissa have also been 6th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 6th. So they're yeah. they're hovering down there. Derek and Chalisa were third, 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 sixth, eighth. They had a rough go of it here, but I feel like they could make up that time on the leg, especially since they don't seem to be having the trouble with the directions and mm -hmm. and those kinds or of just things. communication within themselves too. Yeah, so I feel like they'll be okay, but I just feel like yeah, like for Sunny and Busy, it just feels like it just feels like they are living on borrowed time a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree. I think they are one of those like miracle teams where it's like, how did they still survive? Like they were even shocked when they got to the pit stop and they were seventh. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they had known that they beat those other two teams out of the, the uh, skateboard. They only beat Kishori and Karishma. Rod and beat Derek and Chalisa? No, uh, Derek and Chalisa went first because Sonny or busy um got a check and were wrong and That's then right and they Derek even yelled left. good luck karishma and then ran away and that was the only one left so yeah Derek and chalisa went first and then Derek and chalisa again they didn't give us like what happened to Derek and chalisa so Derek and yeah. chalisa were just falling apart throughout the entire episode <laughs> but we didn't see it no <laughs> wow so sunny and busy were able to like pass them at some point but yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. Because mm -hmm. we saw their rock climb before Derek and Chalisa's rock climb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Derek and Chalisa <laughs> couldn't get they because that's what I was even thinking. I'm like they went to the same detour. Yep. But they didn't so that see made each it other. make even less sense, and they didn't see each other at it. No. <laughs> I mean, or we didn't see them getting harnessed up at the same time. Um, the other people were doing, you know, we didn't see any crossover at all. Maybe Derek and Shalisa are in more trouble than I'm giving them credit for. They might be. Yeah. I mean, now that Amber and Vinny have really come second, second, third, Angie and Danny are becoming friends with everybody. And in the preview for next week, it seems like that's going to continue. Mm. It seems like this is starting to take shape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who your top five are and who your next three out are. Maybe I think Sonny Busy, Ivana Melissa, Derek and Shalisa, two of those three teams will be out before the final five. And mm -hmm. there will be a random top five team from this week who's been consistently getting top five, who is going to have one just miserable, miserable leg. But that's yeah, it just depends I, on what Angie and Danny can hit for detours and roadblocks, I feel. Because if Danny does too many too many roadblocks then like um angie has to do something and if angie can't do it it's gonna be like a real struggle for them so we have um, a spot i'm on wikipedia and it's not telling me who's done roadblocks so i know everybody has to do even yeah i think it's like even to a certain point where they're like hey you've got to do this like i think they can't be like three up or something like that so i think angie has done the coffee and is that it? Um, let me look at what the roadblocks are to this point. So the first roadblock was the jumping through the spinning lassos. That was Danny. Yeah. Um, the day of the dead Calavera design onto she their was not, She was sweaty on the floor and he was painting her. So he painted her. <laughs> yeah. Um, who did the beans? She did the beans. She, so she did the coffee. beans. So it's two, one. And then the plaza sculptures was him. So that's three, one. And now he's and four, one. He did the skateboard. So she's got to do the next one. She's most likely got to do that next one. Because if there's what, there's 12 legs on the race mm -hmm. or 11 legs on the race. I know there's 11 teams, but I know they're doing a mega leg. So literally it's got to be five, five or six, five. It can't be. So, yeah. I mean, maybe they're just trying to make it as long as they possibly can. But you got to, I mean, I was honestly shocked that she didn't do the painting one. I was shocked that she didn't do this one. I think they were worried that it was going to be having to learn a trick or something. 
Okay. You, you know what I mean though? Yeah. If you hear the skateboard thing and it has anything to do with riding a skateboard, if you're that old, you're not learning how to ride a skateboard in under five minutes. Even if it was just like, you need to ride it from this point to that point, yeah, yeah, which I don't yeah. think they would do because that gives too much of an advantage to people who have literally ridden a skateboard in their life, mm -hmm. which is not what the amazing race wants to do. But maybe yeah. that's what they were concerned about because if that would have happened, she would have been, she would have been in trouble. Yeah. I agreed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, but uh, again, and maybe, maybe I just, I don't know if there's always been such a disparity in competition, but this is another reason why with like Ricky and Caesar and Juan and Shane, they, they can't lose like Ricky and Caesar, especially like there, to me, there is no way they don't make the final leg. Mm -hmm. There's too many teams that are significantly worse than them at too many things. Yeah. For them to ever finish that low. I mean that for them to, get eliminated next week, they would need to lose to Derek and Shalisa, Sonny and Busy, Yvonne and Melissa, and Angie and Danny. Then the next week would have to be lose to three of those four teams. Then the week after that, it would be lose to two of those four teams. Yeah. I just don't see a world in which that happens. If they were to finish fifth one leg behind Juan and Shane, Amber and Vinny, Rod and Letitia, and then throw in a random team, I wouldn't be shocked. But it just feels like with the way they're running, mm -hmm. they're in I that agree. final leg. And maybe... We're seeing, you know, we're seeing a lot of, of teamwork further back in the pack. Maybe they don't need teamwork. Maybe they can be a little cocky and just run away from everybody because at the end of the day, they're not the ones who are driving into the Andes tonight. Mm -hmm. That would be Rod and Letitia <laughs> who were well on their way. Like I said, they were about to cross a border. Yeah. Yeah. That self-navigation is just, can be your biggest hit. Like Danny, Danny is apparently a whiz with navigation or like knock you down like Rod and Letitia. Danny was a was an Eagle Scout, right? Like we're under the assumption of that. He just gives the vibe. <laughs> yeah, he might be. I, I feel like he was probably an Eagle Scout, so he's probably very comfortable reading maps legitimately. Mm -hmm. And and you have to think he she mentioned tonight, his mom mentioned tonight that he went to school in Chile. So he's yep. probably, yes, you're working off your phone and whatever, but there's probably some times where it was like, oh, I got to actually like know where I'm going. But I mm -hmm. feel like he probably has like a map may or a map reading or making merit badge that he slaps on <laughs> his every now and then. Yeah. Um, Danny, please come on the podcast with your merit badge. Just <laughs> please, please prove me right. I need it so, so bad. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that, that is. I feel like he is very good at that. We see Rod and Letitia mm -hmm. not being very good at that. Obviously, Derek and Shalisa aren't very good at it, even if we're not seeing it. Um, I think Shane and Juan have hit their stride, though. Yes, and for sure. They went fourth, 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 fifth, second. And this was the first leg where they actually felt like they were in contention to win it. Even though they haven't finished poorly anywhere, they feel like they were in contention to win it. If they stay this even, they could be a team that never wins a leg but and wins then wins the final leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they were saying in a confessional, like, oh, we, we feel like we are a first place team that keeps coming in in the middle of the pack and it's time to change that. They didn't change it this episode, but they, I wouldn't call second the middle of the pack. So um, they're slowly like creeping up and like they are learning the race as they're going and like learning how they operate and work on within the within the legs so i feel like they are slowly creeping up especially since they weren't that far behind ricky and cesar yeah they really weren't i mean they're right there so i if i'm if i'm ricky and cesar that's the team i'm trying to somehow get out of here i don't know how you make that happen but that's that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to get that team eliminated mm -hmm. because it seems like you know we talked about it last week we talked about it pretty much the entire time seems like everybody's willing to help Danny and Angie right now because they really, truly believe they can beat them. Yeah, and Danny and Angie need to be less helpful, I feel. That's because... what Angie was telling Danny tonight. I know. Like, I can't move that fast. You got to stop. Yeah, exactly. I feel like they're being too helpful, which is causing them to have, like, their downfall where they were leading or, you know, in the, in the top of the pack, but – giving out too many good information, uh, too much good information that caused them to fall down to fourth. 
Do you feel though that when you're do you feel that Danny might be on to something here though, where if he's helping all these teams at the top, they're gonna be willing to help him throughout and his mentality is just get me to that final leg. It don't worry about winning any legs, just get to the final leg and let's try to race for victory. Do you think that's what he's thinking? And could this pay off? Because he's clearly helping everybody mm-hmm. in that top bunch. And they're I, like we've talked about, they're gonna be consistently the top bunch. I can see it paying off, but then like they came in fourth today. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't make the final leg. It's but if you teams. get into leg, okay, so maybe it's get to final four, because if you get to leg 10 and you're the best navigator out there and people have been relying on you mm-hmm. over and over again throughout the season, now you're running your own race. Now you're going to win because you mm-hmm. can navigate and they can't. Yeah, I feel like that is a different strategy than we have seen before in the race, being like everyone's friend to help propel you forward. And yeah. like at a certain point, like, all right, now we're solo. Yeah, yeah, because you have to think too. So this season, I believe, ends in Philly. By the time you get mm-hmm. to Philly, you could know your way around and everybody's gonna be able to read stuff, right? But you can just you can just make your way through Philly. And I think with his navigation skills, he'd be able to get a huge leg up on other people who are used to driving around Philly or cities with a GPS on their lap or on their dash. So uh, Ice X also says Danny doesn't want to be U-turned. They won't be U-turned because the last season was the first season with U-turns and everything like that because it's 90 minute. They planned for the 90 minute and not COVID. Every COVID season has not had anything fancy. Do you think they were told that there were no U-turns before the season began? Probably not. So maybe, I, maybe Ice Axe is right. Danny is still thinking about that. Even yeah. yeah. There was something that's happening. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. We have a lot of people watching now. So if you're watching, like this video, subscribe to the <laughs> channel, do all that fun stuff. I was waiting to say it until there was more people involved. So yeah, like the video, like the video, like the video. And Hammer if you want more like. amazing race content, tune in Saturday to the Patreon where Celestine and I will be doing some root info. I believe we are talking about uh, self-navigation and maps because that was brought up a lot this episode. So that was the conversation this episode. That was. <laughs> and, and how, I mean, how are you going on the amazing race? without knowing how to read a map Mm -hmm. like i'm legitimately asking that at this point because they you know that you are self-navigating a lot of the time on the amazing race even if it's not every leg there's going to be one or two legs every single season where you will be self-navigating where you will need to learn to drive stick i mean you know angie was talking about that i forget who the other one was somebody else said oh i just learned how to drive this right before we came out here because you're in krishma i believe that's who it was yeah it's like (laughs) we you're gonna have to drive stick and you're going to have to do um self-navigation at some point is it is it that people are trying but then they get into a city they're not familiar with and they don't know how to look at the map because really all these gigantic road maps they all look the same once you open them it's just a matter of figuring out where you are and where you're going i think that's what it was because um leticia was like i can't even find where we are like i can't read and focus on where the name is and then she's like you can't even do that when we're standing oh here. Stopped. Yeah. <laughs> so um, don't be yelling at me in the back seat trying to find this while you're driving into nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. I I yeah. don't know. It would it would be it would probably be hard for me to read a map, and I'm also terrible at, with directions. I'd be in the back seat saying "Go over there" and yeah. pointing. You'd be pointing. And- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, I also hate driving. So that's a big thing. I, I, I'm not fit for the race. <laughs> yes. You just wouldn't do. So you're just sitting here talking about the amazing race, but you're not allowed to ever even consider going on it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me. Um, are Rod and Letitia done? It was their feuding tonight a sign of things to come. They went first, first, fifth, fourth, fifth. I... Are they a serious contender or no? I think after tonight, they might be getting cut before the the finale. I, I think they might get cut at, like, the fifth place spot. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. Because I could even see them being the surprise team that goes home earlier and a Derek and Shalisa or something sneak into mm-hmm. the top five. Because Letitia did not seem to want to play along tonight. Um, yeah. the, the begging situation was weird how she didn't want to do it. 
-hmm. And it was like, well, you just put this on and it, they had bad communication. They were terrible yeah. at communicating there. And, and the driving situation is going to be an issue because as we know, they're just staying in Spanish speaking countries. Mm -hmm. And, and next week is the mega leg. The mega yeah. leg is the one where if you're going to get lost, right, that's the one where mm -hmm. you could be totally screwed because then it's so hard. You're so far behind. How do you catch double up? Double the detours, double the roadblocks. Well, this yeah. means actually that Angie will have to do one of the, the roadblocks because two of them. So, and do you think that they puts might them at a say, disadvantage or no? It depends on if they have the choice. So it's like they could say like, Angie, you have to do the first one. Or she she is able to choose between the the two. So if she mm. doesn't like the first one, then she, she can do the second, second one. one. Justin Heinrichs wants to know: Will there be two teams eliminated in this double leg like the first episode? Well, there was only one team eliminated in the first episode. It was my Rohan. They said like continue racing. The mega yeah. leg has tended to be at least in the past episodes. We don't we get like half of everything, and then we get the next episode, everyone like checks in and the other half. So like the, this next episode, we won't know what is happening. It's just, oh, so a, we're going to get a non-elimination next week then because it's the mega leg. I think so in the episode, but the leg itself in general will have an elimination, but I think they, they typically have split the mega leg into two episodes. Oh man. I really hope they don't do that because we have an hour and a half. I don't need to watch an episode of the amazing race where nothing happens well you might <laughs> that's how i'm viewing that if nobody goes home I'm, I'm watching an episode where nothing happens yeah you 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 might be viewing something that nothing happens although with it being 90 minutes and with there only being eight teams remaining doing two roadblocks and two detours really shouldn't take that much time like for tv purposes i i don't know i mean I'm just going off based on what they ha have been doing with the mega leg. And it's been annoying where it's like, all right, we're going to talk about this leg of the race and it's not even over and it's, you know, halfway through it and we don't know what's going on for sure. Well, so I hope, <laughs> sorry, I punched my microphone with my elbow. I hope you're wrong. I hope I you're hope wrong. wrong again. I, really do. I hope I'm wrong too. Yikes. All right. You got anything else you got about this episode? No, I think that that's it. Enjoy uh, your five nights in Singapore, Ricky and Caesar. Yeah, they got five mm -hmm. nights. They're 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 getting a lot of fun stuff. Good for them. They're they're they got money up. now. They got that. They can go spend twenty five hundred dollars each at this five night stay. In Singapore. <laughs> yeah. So that's Thanks. good. Um, which again, when you're talking about conversion rates, twenty five hundred dollars each is going to get you a lot in Singapore. So <laughs> um, yeah. But thank you all so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, yeah, James, if you're still listening, I got to get you on. We'll definitely make that yeah. happen. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's what I got. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. McKenna and Celestine will be live. Saturday, not live, but it'll be recorded. And then they'll be posted <laughs> on Saturday for our patrons. That's all tiers of patronage. We've gotten a couple of new patrons over the last couple of days. So appreciative to all of them. In 15 minutes, Blake and I are going live actually talking about more survivor we're going to be doing digging deeper and we're going to talk about human moments and casts and uh i got to talk about jeff's quote from his podcast last night because my goodness gracious he just has this feeling right now where if you are not cast on survivor you're not interesting and you're also kind of a shit person and if you keep saying that enough man <laughs> like whether it's in context or out of context, you're going to start to lose people because you're not that great, Jeff. Like at the end of the day, you're still just a reality TV show host. So calm down a little bit with these, bud. So hey, we're going to be talking Jeff about that. God. Okay. <laughs> What'd you say? Jeff is God. <laughs> I know. I know. No, I look, I love Jeff, but we got to talk about, we got to talk about Mr. Jeffrey on this next, <laughs> uh, this next episode here, because I think he's getting a little, He's getting a little condescending and nobody likes a host who's condescending. And I don't think Phil's ever condescending. And I don't mean me, Phil. I'm very condescending. I mean <laughs> so anyway, no, thank you all so much for listening. If you're, if you're around, if you're at work right now and you're like, man, I don't want to do anything or I got to get through this Excel sheet and I got to listen to something in 15 minutes, you can listen to me and Blake do digging deeper. So there you go. Big day here on the specialist channel. Big day. <laughs> so, that's it. That's what I got. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll see you next time. All right. Bye.